it is wrong to censor newspapers. It is wrong to censor journalists. Look, the New York Post hasn't written a kind thing about me in my six years in Congress. Uh, they're a conservative uh, point of view paper. But that doesn't mean that you can stop uh, publishing their pieces or articles or censor their journalists from sharing stories. And that was California Congressman Ro Khanna, the one and only Democrat who actually had issue with Twitter's process in handling uh, quote unquote news and opinions. He joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures and why he was pushing back on Twitter's censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop evidence back in 2020. This as Elon Musk releases part four of the Twitter files, revealing how policy changes were made just to keep former President Trump. Off of the site, joining me right now is Net Choice Vice President and General Counsel, George Mason University Scalia Law School Professor of Internet Law, Carl Zabo. Carl, it's good to see you. Thanks very much. First, give us your reaction to all we've learned about Twitter. Look, this is incredibly shocking, Maria. It, it's kind of saying something that we all suspected, but now we have the evidence. And that is that Twitter was kind of messing with the numbers. And a lot of us, a lot of the Republicans are really frustrated. We at NetChoice warned Twitter that there would be these types of reactions from Republicans if they continued to engage in these activities. But this is America. They are a private business, and they can decide what they can and cannot promote. What is also revealing from these files, and what really concerns me, is that the government has been engaging with Twitter, that the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, have been engaging with Twitter and putting their finger on the scales. And when the government gets involved, that's when it gets really scary. That's the Orwellian activity that we as Americans cannot allow, and it's the type of Orwellian activity that we at NetChoice fight every single day to stop. Well, that's right. And John Radcliffe was with me yesterday, former DNI, and he says, no, private companies cannot just spew out misinformation knowing that it's a lie. But that's what we have here. We have Twitter amplifying lies, suppressing truth uh, on a whole host of subjects. Anything that went, along, uh, went against the Democrat narrative, whether it was the Russia collusion lie, Hunter Biden and the corruption of the Biden family with its influence peddling, or issues around COVID, around the origin of COVID, that it leaked from a lab, likely, uh, that it, the impact on children would be severe. Uh, all of these things uh, were subjects at Twitter, and they amplified lies and suppressed the truth. A private company cannot do that. I mean, you saw the Stanford professor who challenged COVID getting removed from Twitter. His comments were removed from Twitter. And part of me has to wonder. And it's pretty clear that there's a lot of left Democratic lean at Twitter. But simultaneously, you have the White House coming out there and saying that social media is killing people. You have the White House trying to prevent Musk's takeover of Twitter. You have a lot of people from the government pressuring these social media platforms. And it's not just yeah. Twitter. When Mark Zuckerberg went on Joe Rogan, you heard about how the FBI was engaging. So what Musk has done recently, which no one's really talking about yet, just this past right. weekend, he created community notes. So they're well, taking right. the controls away from Twitter employees. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been hearing about internal communications in 2020, but we need to see what went on in 2021 with a sitting government. I mean, the House Republicans will soon gain the power to launch the congressional investigations, host committee hearings. Many lawmakers say that big tech will be held accountable. And Jim Jordan, Ohio congressman, tweeted this. What's worse, former Twitter executives lying about shadow banning, the media ignoring the story, or promoting those lies. Texas Congressman Pat Fallon also echoed Jordan, tweeting, come January, big tech will be held accountable for their flagrant bias. Carl, what can happen here uh, in terms of uh, new rules, the regulatory environment? Could they lose Section 230? What do you think comes out of these hearings? You know, you mentioned Representative Jim Jordan, and he... Uh, Representative Comer and Representative McMorris Rogers actually have legislation that can help begin to stem the tide of government coercion of these social media platforms. They have a bill that would make it illegal for the federal government to engage in this type of political pressuring. And we're not just mm. talking about federal employees. We're talking about it goes all the way to the White House. That's right. the first step, is get government out of business. The second thing yep. is to figure out 
how much of these were internal decisions and how much of it was pressure from the government? Because that's where the yeah. real concern comes. Twitter was failing when they did this. Musk is turning it around, and there's light at the end of the tunnel. Carl, it's great to get your insight. Thank you, sir. Carl Zabo, the